In the present video, we're going to present some examples of commands available in the equations menu in WX Maxima. So let's get started by opening this WX Maxima. Um, where is it? Here it is. It does WX Maxima file, but I have set up a lot of uh, examples. Let's start with by the way, the way that we're going to do this, we're going to go looking one by one at these um, commands in the equations menu. And so I'm going to try this example. We're going to click my cursor right here, go to equations and select the first example that says solve. And it gives me this interface, right? And so I said try this one and an example where the equation is x raised to the second power minus 20, sorry, minus 25 times x minus 1250 equal to zero. And the variable x to is the unknown to solve for. And then we press OK. And then as uh, Maxima creates the command solve, put in an equation in brackets here and a variable here. The reason for the brackets is because you can actually solve more than more, more than one equation. I'm going to show you that later on. And basically, this gives you the, the form of the command. So there's some other examples that, that you can type. Solve at squared plus bt plus c equals zero. This is the famous um, uh, the, the, the quadratic equation. If I do shift enter here, I obtain the two results for uh, this equation. Is v minus and minus b for the two results of the equation. This is the equation of um, gravitational attraction by Newton. If I do shift enter, I get the two results for r, for example. And here I'm solving a, an equation that comes from hydraulics where we're going to try to solve for this variable called s0. And then I do shift enter. And they ask me, is that quantity positive, negative, or zero? I'm going to go for positive and do shift enter. And then I obtain this result for S0. So basically, this is solving one equation. But you can use it to solve more than one equation. <clears throat> and so if we use that interface, we just can simply go to equation, sorry, equations solve. Then you can type these two equations here. And I'm going to actually do it. Type x squared plus y squared equals 13, comma, x plus 2 times x times y equals 14. And then in here, I need to indicate that the variable solving for is x and y. That's going to give you exactly that result that's shown in there. But this time it got executed. And then it turns out that besides this um, possible solution, there is all the solutions indicated by brackets. And two of them actually have complex numbers in there since the presence of that percentage i is indicated like that. So that interface that I created by using equations solve, which I'm going to cancel right here, is equivalent to typing the equations yourself. Okay. Now, one thing you realize here is that by default, Maxima provides a lot of digits in the results. If you want to reduce that, say, to um, the six digits to make it easier to read, we can go for numeric, set display precision, and change that to six, for example. <clears throat> Press OK. And basically what it does is simply change the value of this variable to six. Now, the column in Maxima is used for assignment for variables. So there's a variable name right here. And that's the value that was given to it is six. And so if I try that solution again with the command that I enter, I'm sorry, we're right here. Before, click in, in somewhere in the command and do shift enter. Now you can see that the long expression that we get over here get reduced to smaller numbers. Another example of solving two equations is these two equations right here. We're going to do shift enter. And we found 
four different possible solutions to that system of equations. Operation of the command equations solve the poly is not clear to me. That's the next one. Solve the poly, so we're going to skip that one. All roots of polynomial, all roots. We, if, we, if we activate that command and we say it's, um, root, well, there's one here called find root that I didn't include in there. If I do find root, it says, well, you can enter an equation. So let's say we enter a simple equation, x squared um, plus 2 times x minus 125. And the variable to be solved is for x. And then here I put the lower bound and the upper bound. And I'm going to try a minus 10 to 10. This is kind of a numerical solution. And it says, well, you know, you get the same endpoints, so find another way. We don't need to go to the form. We can just go back here and change to 0, for example, and do shift enter. Still having the same endpoints. And so I'm going to try, like, uh, let's try 5 here. And it's still with the same endpoint because I put 10 is minus 5. So I'm going to try a little bit bigger, like here, like 15. And do shift enter. And then I did find a root right there. So find root is a numerical solution where you provide the equation, uh, assume equal to 0. You can actually put equal to 0 here and run again. Then you have this, the variable you're solving for x. And then you provide a lower limit and an upper limit where you're going to find a solution. Okay. Then the old roots example here, it's uh, when you find roots of polynomial. It, it triggers this command all roots and basically you have to do is type of polynomial and it is obvious here that the unknown is x. And so if I type this uh, polynomial of order fifth, and do shift enter, I get these solutions. Um, now we have a polynomial of order five, there must be five solutions to it. And uh, um, at least one has to be real. The others are um, complex, and they are complex conjugate in pairs. That's a rule from the fundamental theorem of algebra. In a quadratic equation, in a quartic equation like this, for example, all the roots are in, uh, happen to be real, but they could be also imaginary. Um, equation roots of polynomial B float. <clears throat> uses something called big float. And so when you do that one, equations roots of polynomial big float, it basically, instead of giving you the all roots command, I give you this B for BF all roots means big float. And I, I'm going to delete this one. B, big float basically means a big, big floating point equation. So let's try it for this command right here. Shift, enter. It gives you the results using the B as exponential. That B means big float and it's a, a typical, I'm sorry, not a typical, a, a type of, uh, of um, large number format for maxima.